Self-Management Fund. Resilience, Recovery and Development. What have we learned? Pete McDougall and Alan Gray, Health All Round. It's myself and Pete from Health All Round. So we're a community health project based in Edinburgh. Uh, so we work mainly across southwest Edinburgh, which easily put is kind of hay market up to kind of Wester Hills, uh, but mainly focusing on kind of Gorgie Del Rye, Sockton and Stenhouse. Uh, quite a simple aim, really. It's just to support people to lead kind of healthier, happier lives. So it's kind of focusing on all aspects of social, physical and mental well-being. So to do that, Health All Round is kind of made up of kind of smaller projects. And as you'll see there, there's a list there. So we've got Heads Up, which focuses more on mental health. So kind of counselling, CBT, and then obviously one-to-one -one and group work. Active Steps is, is my kind of remit. So it's more focusing on physical activity. Uh, so it's a range of kind of exercise classes, one-to-one -one activities, uh, <clears throat> Walking groups and then also healthy eating is tied down there as well. Good morning, Gorgie focuses more on kind of older adults. <coughs> and again, it's kind of social activities as well as physical activity in there as well. Grown Create is more about kind of reading and writing groups and art groups. Uh, we've got a Polish link worker who kind of focuses more on the Polish community in Edinburgh. Uh, and that is to kind of help with anything at all from kind of helping translate to kind of get them involved with kind of health all around activities or general health care. And then today we're going to focus more on Go For Green, uh, which obviously Pete's here to talk a bit more about. So I'll pass you back to Pete, who's just going to give you a little bit of context for the project. Thanks, Alan. Um, so um, I've only been at um, Health All Around since October. Previously, I was um, involved in Sort of writing parks and green space strategy for the council of Edinburgh and also parks management, um, and that was that was useful actually uh, because the what I learned over the last kind of eight years was that uh, you know there's the, there's massive inequalities in terms of the kind of audience who, who, who or if you if you will the audience who uses parks uh, or accesses parks. Um, I was been involved in quite a lot of research. Um, with Edinburgh University and partners and, and the English local authorities. And one of the things that uh, is, is clear and is empirical is that uh, there are significant qualities existing and uh, who actually accesses green space and parks. Um, work done by uh, Rich Mitchell in Glasgow over COVID actually um, really brought that into sharp focus. Um, and that, that really showed that people with, you know, with, with poorer health, people from areas that don't uh, deprivation and older people uh, definitely had less opportunity um, and and or willingness to access quality green space uh, and were less likely to use them than folk who were who were better off um, and certainly financially secure. Uh, and a couple of wee pictures there, I think, illustrate that. You, on the, the left hand side of the screen, you have um, what you could term as a as a, a relatively well off middle class family who are healthy and happy in a in a really nice quality green space um, and then the slide on the right shows the, the situation that we find in a lot of our particularly peripheral housing estates uh, in any city in, in, in the UK. Um, parks are bad quality, you wouldn't want to go there really. Um, why, why would you? It just looks dangerous and uh, uh, unwelcoming. The, 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 I suppose the thing about the, the research that Rich Mitchell did showed that people during COVID who were well off would jump in their car and head off to the nearest quality green space. Um, and sometimes these quality green spaces were, for example, Salton Park, which is close to Health All Round in the west side of Edinburgh. This is an £8 million restoration. It's a lovely, lovely green space, um, but it's also in an area where there's fairly significant pockets of deprivation. Uh, and what Rich found, what Rich Mitchell found was that um, even the, the people who kind of the, who looked better off um, and sounded better off and were, sounded posh, as people might say, that tended to displace people from parks, which was, uh, in, in COVID, was a real tragedy. So, so Go For Green was a kind of name of the project that we came up with. And it was kind of, I suppose, COVID was a catalyst for it, really, where... Obviously, we had to adapt quite quickly to that situation. As I said in the introduction, social, the social aspect of health all around is a key, key theme that runs through kind of all our kind of groups and activities. So it's a big thing, and we know how important it is for good health. Uh, but over COVID, that was something we had to try and adapt with. 
So everything went online, which did go really well and was successful, but we did recognise that there still was groups of people who weren't reaching online. Uh, and I suppose at Health All Round, we were, we were aware of the benefits of green space. Uh, there was no doubt about that. But I guess we'd never really thought about exercise classes in open air or using Salton Park. We had done for the walking group, but we just kind of made which turned out to be the wrong assumption that people wouldn't want to exercise out in the green space in terms of an exercise class. So, but we thought, well, during lockdown, it's a good try, good opportunity to try it and see how we go. So we set up a couple of small classes and proved very popular, which was great. So we got a good number along. And then from there, uh, as we started to kind of get feedback and evaluation, Again, whilst the exercise part was important and people were benefit, benefiting from it, basically already accessing the classic long-term conditions. So whilst that might have been attending, the real kind of benefit was more coming from the kind of time spent outdoors, time spent in nature, uh, the social aspect of being together outside as well. We found even out with the people attending the class, people were then a bit more likely to access the park as well. So it just seemed to be a whole range of benefits. So we kind of backed up what we kind of knew, but I guess it's harder to ignore it when it's actually part of the project. So that was where we decided to try and build on this kind of piece of work and incorporate green space more into all health or own activities and certainly focusing on people with long-term health conditions and people in the immediate area because we are funded to work in kind of the areas of deprivation. So that was where the go for green idea kind of all stemmed from. And that's what Pete's been working on and continues to work on and is developing the project into how we kind of want it to be and hopefully kind of have that impact that we're looking for. So Pete's just going to take you through kind of the direction of the project and what we're actually now beginning to deliver on. So, um, so <laughs> it's funny here, but the go for green coordinator, that's me. Um, I suppose that, uh, you know, like Alan said, you know, they've done such an amazing amount of kind of groundwork in this um, made my life an awful lot easier. Um, so I've just, you know, pretty much hit the ground running. Um, in my previous job, we worked a lot long with Health All Around and done a, a pilot for a thing called Greenheart Parks, which is an idea I came up with when I worked with the council. Um, and they're, the council's still mulling that over and working with academics, developing what they think it might be, whereas thanks to the Alliance, um, Health Around is able to just take the idea and run with it, and that's exactly what we're doing. Um, so I've been developing that, you know, you know, none of this has been unexpected to anybody, but, you know, a range of groups, um, walking groups, um, winter and spring wellbeing walks and talks and parks. Um, Alan and I are working on a walk with a doc, which you're going to hear quite a lot about in the future. I think it's a, an international idea, which basically is... Um, I walk with a doctor in a, in a green space, which is really cool. Um, and they start off um, with a, sort of a 20 minute talk on a, on a theme. Um, we're going to look at probably diabetes uh, and then go for a walk in the park and then have a cup of tea or coffee at the end and, uh, and, and a chat. Um, we've got ecotherapy groups going, which is uh, you know, mindfulness in nature, which uh, resonates with stuff from, from COPE earlier, which was, uh, you know, that, that works incredibly well outside. I've been in a few of the sessions and uh, it's a good way to relax when you're at your work, for sure. Um, like Alan said, the exercise classes in the outdoors. Um, we're moving uh, lots of our other stuff, right, in art, photography groups, etc., into parks and green spaces when we can. I've got a new men's green shed group starting next week, which is a, it's a, it's a men's shed group without a shed. The shed is the, the great outdoors, and that's the green bit of it. Um, and again, this is a pilot. It's an experiment. We'll see how it works, but it's proven pretty popular at the moment. It's um, got quite a lot of folks interested in coming along. Um, again, in the Green Heart Parks idea, we'll just run stuff right through the summer uh, and into the into the late autumn at least um, on you know interest and fun activities which help people connect with the local park. Uh, and also the, the great spin-off a lot of this is um, it's attracting new people to health around, ones who previously might not have used their services. Once they come along to some of the the, um, the go for green stuff, um, they can then uh, move into some of the other services that we provide, um, which is good. Um, and one one kind of final thought is none of this is new. Uh, 
a lot of what all of us do is the new it's building on stuff that's been around for a long time and we're finding you know ways to make a lot of this stuff more relevant and or work better in the modern world so this is a, a guy who's a big hero of mine john wilson mccatty who's the superintendent of parks um and and from 1906 i think he started with the parks in edinburgh um so he's in the dwarf then um and a lot of his thinking was based on the the kind of you know, the late victorian ideas about health and society um so he wrote in 1923 in the Royal Royal Caledonian Horticultural Society's journal, and he said this, and it's still, I still, you know, the language is old fashioned, but it still holds true for, for, for today, I think. If the city is to be, be beautiful, it must be healthy, and health is bound up with individual happiness. But how are we to bring into being a beautiful and healthy city with a well organized community and all that, and all the pleasant things associated with it? An ideal city should be well composed, of the greatest degree of order, with ample space, so that there may be healthfulness and plenty of light and air for all classes, according to the circumstances and requirements. I think that's what we're trying to achieve at Health Around right now. Thank you. <laughs>